Okay, you wanna learn how to get rich in Epic 7? I mean like crazy rich. You wanna figure out how to make the most gold possible so that you can get that one billion gold badge and show it off to your friends, let them know just how much you stunted your account so you could get this badge. Well, this is the guide for you. Here we're gonna discuss the differences between hunt and unrecorded history, and we're doing it during a buff event so you can make an informed decision on where you should farm based on your needs. First, we'll cover some basics. I'm going to be comparing Banshee 13 because it's my fastest hunt and it's also a 100% success rate for me. I can clear Banshee 13 in about 35, 36 seconds with the speed boost. And if you count the, the five second countdown timer and the loading screens, it gives me about 45 seconds per run, which lets me do about 80 runs per hour. And we're going to be comparing Unrecorded History level 30. Now 30 through 33 all give the same level of rewards, but 30 is the fastest clear rate. I know 33 drops in Epic Catalyst, we'll get into that later, but trust me, 30 is the one you want to farm if you're going for speed and gold efficiency. To get a pretty accurate comparison, I ran Unrecorded History for about 3 hours and I ran Hunt 13 for 3 hours and averaged them out to get a per hour income rate and a per stamina income rate. Now we'll talk about the buffs that we have up. First of all, I've got both of the guild buffs. Make sure that your guild is giving you both of your guild buffs or else join my discord and we'll get you into a better guild. I also have the bonus experience artifact. You may or may not have this, it is limited. We got them from anniversaries. I'm sure they'll run it again come August. I also have the $5 monthly pack that gives the increased boost to EXP. I did not get the $10 monthly pack because it's only a 5% boost to gold and I just don't really think it's worth it. Um, other than that, the only buffs that are up are the event buffs, which right now is all buffs. All of the event buffs are running, the one that boosts hunts as well as the one that boosts HP, so it's a great time to compare these two. Now for full transparency, we're doing everything we can to maximize gold. In the hunts, we're selling every single piece of gear we get, and in unrecorded history, every stigma we get, we're turning into penguins. So we're going to jump into the sanctuary. This is how my sanctuary is laid out. You'll notice I have 330 on my Forest of Souls. This makes penguins cost 120 stigma per penguin summon. Now, I spent about 250,000 stigma yesterday. Well, not about, I spent exactly 250,000 stigma because as you can see, there's RNG to your pulls. You might get medium or epic penguins, so the amount of gold per Stigma was a little tough to figure out, but I 250,000 is a pretty massive sample size and it averaged out to 91.33 gold per Stigma now if you increase your force of souls You'll get a 5 10 or 15 percent reduction on the cost of penguins which directly translates to an increase in gold so You get about 5 10 or 15 percent more gold selling your penguins You've got to make the decision whether or not that's worth changing the layout of your sanctuary for. 100 million gold versus 115 million gold. Personally, I use the Alchemist steeple so much, I decided to leave the cost there and make my penguins a little more expensive. To each their own. Now, in Unrecorded History, you also get friendship points. Think? With these friendship points, you want to make sure you buy these penguins. You can grab five of these things a week and you're going to be swimming in friendship points from doing unrecorded history. But another thing you can do, and I factored this into the equations, you can use the friendship points earned to buy friendship bookmarks. You can then go and do friendship summons. These will give you two star fodder and some, art or some uh, two star and one star artifacts. It's nickel and dime, but I still factored it in. You can sell these two-star artif oh, two artifacts. And, you know, there's another 10k gold. Not that big of a deal. I would prefer to use these to level artifacts rather than try to get a minuscule amount of gold out of them, but I did factor it into the equation. But more importantly, there is the two-star units. Only three of them from that pull, and it gave me 240 stam uh, stigma. 
That translates into 22,000 gold when I convert those into penguins. So you actually get a decent amount. Now that's tedious. What it's tedious to summon and sell and transmit all of these things and then go buy penguins. So I just keep it as an emergency slush fund. You know, maybe someday you really, really need some gold. You can use your friendship summons to get you some gold when you need it in a pinch. But if you really want to min max, you can transfer all of that into gold. Now let's talk about the hunt first. This is my Banshee team. Now this is detailed in my Banshee one-shot video, but I'll go ahead and run it through once just to show you. It's perfectly tuned so that there is a 0% chance fail rate. The only way this hunt team fails is if the internet crashes. I can put a friendship unit in that fourth spot to level it. Just got to make sure it's the slowest unit on the team so it doesn't interfere or trigger any dual attacks. Banshee wounds. Chloe guarantees the magic nail. And strays one shots. All of this factored in along with this five second countdown it does here at the end plus all of these loading and transition screens. It works out to about 45 seconds per run. I, I stopwatched it as best I could from start of hunt to start of hunt. 45 seconds per run is about 80 runs per hour. I'll go ahead and show my Banshee team stats while I discuss the gold. Now at 80 runs per hour, you're going to clear about 4.4 million gold every hour, plus or minus a little bit depending on RNG, but hunts cost 20 stamina per run, so an hour worth of hunts is going to cost you 1600 stamina. That works out to just under 2800 gold per stamina. So 4.4 million gold per hour, 2800 gold per stamina is what we get from hunts. Now if you want to build a fast hunt team or you want more details on the Banshee 13 team, just search on my channel or search on YouTube in general for whatever hunt you're looking for plus my name, Tristan Wolf B13, Tristan Wolf W13, and you'll find descriptions on how to build yourself a nice hunt one-shot team. Now let's talk a little bit about unrecorded history. First of all, you want to farm the top four floors ideally. The top four floors, floors 30 through 33, all have the same payout. If you've got to drop down to other floors, they pay out decent, but not quite as well. It's a very small difference. So if you're catalyst chasing, you can do other zones, but 29, I'm sorry, 30 is my favorite because it's super fast. First, I'm just going to take a couple of friendship units. You want to load up with friendship units. I'm going to be level or friendship farming these two units you'll notice they have the friendship artifacts on both of them if you do not have the friendship artifacts then you were just not here for the anniversary events where they gave them out or the holiday events they'll come around again i'm sure just stick with it rb is going to be my principal clear unit you can also run free spirit tiaria or even lena in this position i have rb on the exp boosting artifact again if you weren't here for anniversaries they'll probably run another one of these at the end of august with the korean anniversary just stick with the game you'll eventually get it if your rb can't quite kill you can put this artifact on one of your other units and stick him on you know, Portrait or Tonfa or some other damage dealing unit. But it's important that Arby can one-shot each stage or Free Spirit Tiaria can one-shot each stage. And Commander Pavel is going to be my killing cleanup unit. This is just my standard RTA Commander Pavel. I will discuss other options for those of you who don't have Commander Pavel. But first I want to demo how efficient this team is. If you can build this team, it is the best for farming fast. So RB one shots stage one or Lena or Tiaria. Stage two, you can't use green Vildred because too many fire units. And he hurts stage three with Chirgus Commander Pavel who kills and boom, you're through. Now this team technically works on stages 31 through 33, but the reason I don't like using this team there is because Pavel struggles killing the final bosses on the top three stages. In this stage you fight Ravi, and the trick with Ravi is that she will counterattack once she's attacked, and Pavel doesn't quite have the shops to one-shot her. 
So when you do finally get to Ravi here... Arby does his S3, which triggers a counter, so this slows things down because you got to watch this animation. And then Cavill's triggered, but doesn't quite kill, so now you have to watch Cavill's animation for the final kill. So all of these extra animations just slow things down for the exact same payout. So unless you're really, really wanting the catalysts that drop in this stage, stick with 30. Now let's go ahead and look at 32. 32 has a similar problem to 31, although RB clears just like normal. When you get to Rose, it takes a little longer to kill her. Now, at least Rose doesn't counterattack or waste your time with her animations, but RB and Cavill together don't quite take Rose out. So RB does his S3, it triggers your Commander Pavel, doesn't quite kill, so you have to watch Commander Pavel's animation. And again, it just slows the run down for the exact same payout. You get the same gold, the same drop tree, the same stigma, everything's the same. If you're noticing differences in the amount of stigma payout, that's because I'm randomly getting stigma drops. It's not that one floor is better than the other. And the one everybody wants to farm because it has an epic catalyst. If you really, really, really want to min-max for the epic catalyst, I will go through some teams to beat it. But here's the principal problem with the this floor, is when you hit Meru twice, she CR pushes to the front of the line. So first hit, Commander Pavel hits, Meru pushes to the front of the line, she does her S3, and it puts attack down on units. And an attack down Pavel won't kill. Now if you 15% that, that attack down, then you'll kill. And you'll still clear, but I mean, everybody has to take turns. It's god awful slow. So, the ways to deal with this are pretty straightforward. Logically, the best way to do it is you put immunity on Commander Pavel, but usually people don't want to re gear to farm a side story, so we're going to ignore the option of putting immunity on Commander Pavel. So here, here are the other ways to do it that don't involve immunity on Commander Pavel. So you really want that epic catalyst so much that you're going to force yourself to farm this team. You only want run one friendship unit. And in that other blank, you run Ambitious Tywin. I know, now we've got three ML5 units, but hey, you want to do it. So when Meru does her AoE attack... Commander Tywin cleanses it instantly, so there's no way the attack down can stick on Pavel, and Pavel one-shots her. So that lets you do this phase. You could also run Angel of Light Angelica. Same effect. It'll trigger her S2 passive, and she'll cleanse the debuffs off of him. But it'll probably also CR push her up, and you'll have to waste time staring at her animation as she S3s before Pavel kills. Another option is you can run a knight as one of the side units and on that night you put bastion of perlusia perlusia perludia per, per. anyway this artifact and it puts immunity on pavel and you don't have to worry about the attack down likewise if instead of arby you run free spirit tiaria free spirit tiaria skill tree will put immunity on commander pavel after she attacks protecting you from the attack down so these are all ways around that but the only way I found around it that lets you run two friendship units uh, other than trying to build a really powerful free spirit Tyria is instead of Commander Pavel, you run a really jacked strays. And I mean really, really strong strays. So this is my, uh, my Banshee 13 strays and he is not free to play friendly. But the nice thing about strays is there's no animations to deal with. He's strong enough to one-shot um, Meru before she attacks. So, RB clears, RB clears, you get to the final stage, RB wounds, and Stray's kills. So you can build this team as an optional way to speed farm this stage if you really want those epic catalysts but even Stray's animation is longer than just Pavel's S2 so I tell you what man just stick with this phase because let me tell you you get so many catalysts you just go to the steeple and exchange those catalysts for some epic catalysts 14 catalysts you can get yourself the epic that you need um, 
it's up to you. I mean, I, I, I farm 33 because I've got strays to do it, but if you are really uh, working a hunt buff event and you really want to speed through it, 30 is the way to go. You'll get so much AP anyway that you'll be able to um, purchase the catalysts you need as well. Now let's say you don't have Commander Pavel. He's not a common unit for people to have. You don't need Commander Pavel, especially on 30. You just need a unit that can one-shot after RB Wounds. Watcher Shuri, boom, dead. You don't have Watcher Shuri, maybe you've got a Assassin Sid. Stick them on a destruction set. I mean, you probably have one of these in your storage. Just build them up, put them on a, a damage set. Look how much overkill this is. Very, very dead. Big overkill. You can use any unit that can one-shot. Surmi, as long as you respect the fact that he is a fire unit and don't take green units, you could take Surmia. You could take green Sid. I know he's a green unit, but his S3 ignores element. You got all kinds of options for, for wiping out that final boss. Just make sure whoever it is is a little bit slower than Arby, and you've got your farming team. Another nice thing about unrecorded history is you get these currency that you can trade in in your guild, and buy those guild artifacts now let's talk about the differences between unrecorded history and hunt in unrecorded history you get all the stigma you use that to buy the penguins you sell the penguins you get a ton of gold from selling penguins if you do not use the stigma to just buy penguins the amount of gold you get from unrecorded history is greatly reduced if you buy things like spirit blooms or you use those penguins instead of selling them for gold, use them to level units, the income from unrecorded history plummets. In unrecorded history, you get a lot of charms. Way, way, way more charms than you get farming a uh, wyvern with a pet that drops charms. In fact, the only way to get charms from hunts is to have the pet that drops charms, and it's still a fraction what you get from unrecorded history. But when you farm gear, you get reforge mats. You also get crafting mats. You also get expedition posters. You don't get these things from unrecorded history. Here's a complete list of the things that you get from unrecorded history that you don't get from hunts and the things you get from hunts that you don't get from unrecorded history. Now you can farm different levels of unrecorded history to chase specific uh, catalysts, but I'm telling you, you will get so many catalysts speed farming 29. I mean, look, I've got 44 of these rings of glory. So if you want a different catalyst, you just pop over to the sanctuary to trade for the catalyst that you do need. You can trade normal catalysts once a day and epic catalysts once a week. So say I need these, uh, this catalyst here. I stick in seven rings of glory. and I get four Blessings of Orbis out of it. So yeah, you know, I, I, I'm at a three Catalyst deficit, but I have 44 of these things, and that's just from farming today. I didn't have any of them when I started farming. You will get so many Catalysts. You can also exchange them for Epics. Now it's, it's 14, and it exchanges into three or four, depending on your luck. You can also do three of an Epic, and then two more of these, and it's a one-to-one -one trade out. You'll, you'll get three epics for this at the cost of two normals for a swap out. You can do this once a week, but you can also use the AP you're earning, and you're going to earn a lot of AP. Now, I didn't track how much I got, but especially if you use the uh, AP boosting scroll while you're farming this that does stack with the buff event by the way So make sure you're using your AP boosting scroll you will get a ton of AP But hey, we're here to talk about the difference between the two. I Mean that was the whole reason for the video, right? That's what you came here for was which is better to farm so as we discussed before we were able to do 45 second runs with my Banshee team which worked out to be 80 runs per hour 20 stamina per run that worked out to 1600 stamina per hour i was getting 4.4 million gold running banshee 13 every hour that works out to 2766 stamina or gold per stamina so 2766 gold per stamina running hunts 4.4 million per hour in unrecorded history I was getting 5.3 million gold per hour selling all of the 
stigma into penguins, that's 21% more gold from unrecorded history. So basically wyvern times 1.21 is what I was making. Now, if your force of souls is maxed out, it's about 33% more gold. The big deal though is at 33 seconds per run, I'm doing 109 runs per hour, substantially more. It's 29 more runs per hour, so that's more chances for drops, more chances for catalysts, more chances for more chances for gear charms, but most importantly, instead of 20 stamina per run, it's only 8 stamina per run. So even though I'm doing 109 runs, that's 872 stamina instead of 1600 stamina. That means we are earning 6.1 to 6.7 K gold per stamina, 6,164 to 6,762, depending on the level of your first force of souls, gold per stamina. That is 222 to 244% more than hunts. Three point, that's 3.22 to 3.44 times the amount of gold that you make from hunts. So. At, at almost three and a half times more gold per stamina, it is definitely the way to go. Just remember, again, I reiterate, if you start using your stigma to buy spirit blooms or you start using your penguins to level units, the gold value from unrecorded history plummets. Uh, whereas if you decide to keep the gear that drops from hunts, it only affects your gold value a little bit because the bulk of the gold comes from actually doing the hunts. So remember, Epic Seven's a game of resource management. If you need gear or reforge mats, make sure you're farming hunts. If you need catalysts or gear charms, fun, farm unrecorded history. And if gold is your limiting factor, unrecorded history is the place for you. The chart and data for all this will be in the description of the video. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments section or jump in my Discord. Have a great one, everybody.